Brothers and sisters, this evening we get a glimpse from St. Paul's letter to the Romans that speaks of God's immense love. And in that section, St. Paul begins to show us how deep God's love is for us. He begins by saying that perhaps for a good person, someone may choose to die. And yet, even that would be with difficulty. And yet, Jesus Christ shows his love because of the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ chose to die for us. So this goes to show that Jesus' love is beyond compare, beyond anything that we as humans can muster up on our own. Because certainly, no one of us, given his or her own human nature, would choose to die for somebody that was considered wicked and sinful. We might be willing, like in the action movies, to lay down our life for somebody important, like a president or a congresswoman. The idea is that typically we want to protect what is good. And Jesus shows us how much he sees the good in us. Because even though humanity fell into sin, it never lost its intrinsic goodness. God made humanity at the beginning in his image and likeness, and though sin obscures that image and likeness and makes us fall short of the glory of God, God never revoked the words that he spoke about our humanity, that it is very good. This is why we see in our struggle against sin, we aren't speaking so much about choosing between something so obviously wrong and something so obviously good. Instead, sin tends, tends to tempt us by the idea that what we are looking for is in fact good. It lies to us by telling us that there is something to find fulfillment in, in the immediacy of our sinful desires. But our Catholic faith and the teaching of those throughout the centuries, the men and women who are the saints, show us that instead what ends up happening is sin takes something that is good, a deep desire, that is a desire for goodness, and works it. So God calls us to recognize the goodness of our humanity. As the Desert Fathers would say, there is nothing in our human nature that was not designed good by God from the beginning. It is simply that we are called to direct all of our human faculties toward what is true and good. And when we see this, this helps us to avoid the trap that says, I don't miss this is the devil's workshop. Because if we try to stop certain tendencies, it is difficult to do so because there's still a desire that still needs to be met. Instead, much like judo, we are called to redirect the energy toward what is good, toward what is holy, toward what is true. The fact that Jesus loves us this much should give us pause that he did not come to deny us happiness or to tell us that we are called to only engage in suffering somehow, but instead he has called us because he wants to give us life and life in abundance. He wants us to know what it means to experience peace after and even going through difficulties. He wants us to know what it means to have love even for enemies. He wants us to know what it means to have joy even in spite of sorrows that we have experienced in our lives. 
He gives us certainly this gift of himself in his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And because of his great love for us, we know that we are here this evening believing in Jesus, not because we somehow found Jesus, but rather he found us. He is the one who came to us, who encounters us in our sinfulness. He is the one who comes to us, loves us as we are, and pours forth his graces upon us in such a way that his love and his grace begin to change the depths of our being, so that what was once pleasing to us in the past now becomes futile, that what once seemed so good, now we recognize is actually a counterfeit. And we begin to see how walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, walking in His way, His truth, and His life, truly begin to lead us to the fullness of life. This should spark in us the same gratitude that we see in Mary of Bethany, who we meet in the Gospel today, in a very particular way. She is the, brother, the, the sister of Martha, and her brother is Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. <clears throat> Mary of Bethany is so taken by Jesus and by what he is offering not only to her, but to every person, that she is bold in giving extravagant worship back to Jesus. She takes this alabaster shop, already worth a fortune just because of the fact that it's made of alabaster. And she pours out this aromatic nard worth 300 days' wages, basically worth a year's salary. So just imagine if you decided to plop down on one person 50K. $50,000. Just extravagantly pouring that out. And she gets down, anoints his feet, and dries it with her hair. It is an act of intimacy, an act of self gift, and an act of extravagant love. Now, oftentimes, as Catholics, because of the fact that the majority of our time, our prayer tends to be liturgical. There tends to be rules and regulations. We try to say our prayers together. It would be difficult for us to express our prayer with that extravagant love that Mary of Bethany shows to us in the Gospel today. And yet, we are called to have that kind of extravagant love for Jesus in every activity that we do, whether it is saying our prayers that maybe are wrote, but saying them with meaning, intentionality, and with our hearts and minds united to our lips, so that we know that we are saying what we mean and meaning what we say. This is one way that in our formal liturgical prayers, we can extravagantly worship Jesus, loving him for the love which he has given to us, the love that proves itself not in words alone, but in action, dying for us sinners, while we did not merit it. In our own prayer times, though, we can certainly show the extravagance of our love, either by being on our knees, by kissing images of Jesus, by pouring out our praises upon him. St. Francis of Assisi, whom we know very well, loved to engage all of his senses in the praises of God. He would look about and see all of creation, and he would praise God for that gift of creation. He would see 
his own life and the life of all creation caught up in the liturgy of heaven, praising God continually. We recognize as well that we are not alone in our worship of God. We have the holy angels with us, and we can ask the holy angels to teach us to worship Jesus the way that they do. When they render all praise and honor to him who is seated upon the chair. We ask in particular Saint Mary of Bethany to pray for us that our hearts may be willing to break open and pour forth all of the aroma of the love that we have for the Lord Jesus. And should we find our vessel lacking, we need not be dismayed, because we can ask the Holy Spirit, the one who is the oil of gladness, to fill our hearts with love for Jesus, so that we have something to pour out upon him in our praise.